So much news, guys, but we gotta head out and talk to Rusty Manziel from Dogs 24-7 because as Georgia tries to secure the number two signing class here, I, I can't waste any more time. Travis Hunter, we're, we've heard some smoke around a potential uh, excitement there to see what happens with him. I, from your perspective, what are you hearing right now as it pertains to the Dogs and Travis Hunter? Well, I can't start a five-star conversation without Andrew <laughs> Robbins jacket. I'm very impressed with Ivan. He brought his <laughs> he brought his A game today. Very impressed, young man. I had a way to step to the challenge. So Travis Hunter, look, I've been doing this a long time. Uh, I know when I when I wrote those words on Dogs two four seven that Georgia was in this. I knew what that was going to do to my phone. I knew what it was going to do to the next couple of weeks for me. Here's what I'll say: I'm pretty confident that Georgia's a legit, serious player here. I'm not saying he's going to end up at Georgia, but he's had multiple conversations with Georgia staff members. He's had a conversation, at least two different conversations, with Kirby Smart. You would be a fool to think Colorado is not in this. He was there on Sunday. He moved, came back to Mississippi, moved out on Monday. He's back in Georgia now until he makes a decision. He cannot be on campuses. Travis Hunter has seen everything he needs to see out of schools. I think USC's a school trying to get the mix. Miami potentially maybe. I think when it's said and done, this one's going to be prime versus Kirby again for Travis Hunter. Oh my goodness. This feels like deja vu all over again. I got a yeah. very simple question for you that's probably a complex answer. What position is Travis Hunter going to play if he ends up at Georgia? Well, from what I understand, you let him play whatever he wants when he gets there. But but I think the message from Georgia is long-term uh, wide receiver. I think Miko Hardman is a, is a case and study with that. He played a year at corner at Georgia. You know, he was more comfortable playing wide receiver. You see his impact on the NFL level. And I think that Travis Hunter long-term is just a natural wide receiver. You see that catch he made Saturday in the Celebration Bowl. Incredible, incredible uh, play. He's done that year after year after year. Uh, Travis uh, – Blair and, and Andrew have seen it over and over again. I think he's a dynamic playmaker, and I think long-term, uh, he, he can play NFL either position. I really do think that, but I think wide receiver is his ultimate ceiling uh, wherever he ends up. Okay, but as for the other side of the ball, I mean, there's something about Georgia and reeling in some top defensive talent. Who in this class mm -hmm. right now stands out to you? I, I'm, I love Raylan Wilson. I think Raylan Wilson is that guy. I mean, I think you look at him in today's game, how he translates to the collegiate level, what he does, uh, you know, on, even on Sundays, if he makes it to the NFL, he has that pedigree. Andrew's certainly very clear coming out of his state in Tallahassee. You know, I'm very careful and I've always have been about comparing people, but it's going to be hard not to look at him and say this guy's Roquan Smith, who was a top 10 NFL pick because Raylan Wilson can run. He is fast. Uh, he's that guy. And if Georgia, if Georgia in about 58 minutes lands five-star Damon Wilson, uh, an edge defender, number two on 24-7 sports rankings out of Venice, Florida, I think he's a guy that can be impactful very quickly. Uh, they need some guys that can create pressure from the edge. I love what I see out of him. Defensive backs, we could go on and on about Georgia. <laughs> Obviously, that draft last year, what they did on that side of the ball is not going to hurt Georgia anytime soon, stepping in the living rooms. Yeah, it's that proof of concept that we talk about so much. How do you like their chances to land Damon Wilson? I mean, I've been on it a while. I mean, this has been a back and forth battle. I think uh, the Ohio State, I, you know, I talked to our guy, Bill Kierlich, Ohio State. I think we've talked more about this individual than we have anybody in the last 10 years we've worked together. Uh, we've been, everybody's been back and forth. I think at the end of the day, he goes to Georgia uh, to have two Georgia staff members at his game this past weekend in the state championship down in Fort Myers or Fort Lauderdale area. So. When you start taking those kind of late visits like that, you probably feel pretty good. And I think he's had every reason for the last two months to commit to Ohio State. And for whatever reason, Georgia kept hanging in there, hanging in there. And uh, look, I tell Georgia fans all the time, I didn't think at the end of the day they were going to get Caleb Downs. You're not going to get every single one of them. Uh, there's no points in finishing second in recruiting. But with Damon Wilson, I feel like that this guy just wanted to go to Georgia and he held off and held off and held off. At the end of the day, I think he's going to go to Georgia here in a few minutes. My phone's blowing up now. <laughs> what time does this guy commit? At 3 o'clock, he will make his decision. All right. Well, we'll put the phone to the side because I have more questions for you here. We, no, we okay, to, I'm good. Yeah, you good? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we refer to it as you know an embarrassment of riches when it comes to all the defensive talent that's entering Georgia right now. Who in this class on the defensive side of the ball do you see making a day one impact next year? Uh I think Jonel Aguero, a uh, uh, safety out of the Boston area. I mean, Georgia needs some help there. They're going to lose All-American Chris Smith uh, this year, who's a, who's a young man who was a three-star in high school. This guy's a first-team 
all American. He was a three star prospect out of high school. So that's another feather in Kirby Smart's, you know, recruiting thing. Hey, we can develop you here. But Jonel Aguero comes in with a different skill set. And I think Georgia fans would be extremely happy to look back there. And last year, we were having the same conversations about five-star Malachi Starks. He started every single game for Georgia this year. And I think when you look at the back end and the opening there, I think Janelle Aguero is coming to Georgia with the idea of playing. And I think the staff thinks he needs to have an impact quickly. All right, Rusty, a lot of big name players coming into this Georgia 2023 class. But from your perspective, who's somebody that we're not, you know, maybe aware of, but should be keeping a closer eye on? It's funny. I had a conversation with Andrew yesterday. Uh, I gave him. I gave him. Like, I gave him. Some, I gave Andrew some information yesterday. He didn't tell me he was going to wear that jacket. So we got to start swapping information here. Uh, Yazid Haynes is a young man out of the Philadelphia area, wide receiver. Uh, we, we've had some discussions over him. And listen, it happens. Sometimes you don't have enough data. You kind of feel like the tapes there, but you want to back some things up with some verified measurables and times and those types of things. So I think when you look at him, I think he's an industry three-star wide receiver. He got to Georgia on Saturday, and I can tell you in his first three or four days, uh, there's been some buzz out of him, and that's similar to what happened with a, uh, Adonai Mitchell, who is Georgia's go-to guy now. Uh, you know, he was during the COVID season, so we didn't really get a chance to work him out. He was ineligible when he moved to Tennessee. So there's a lot of variables with his rank, and people ask me all the time, how was he a three-star? We didn't have the data to back him up. This is a young man right here that I think is going to outplay his ranking pretty quick, and that's a wide receiver. Uh, how crazy the sound is already on campus and having his fourth practice today. All right, Rusty, thank you so much. You can hit the phones again. And, guys, I wish I could tell you that we were going to give you another shot of the beautiful jacket <laughs> that's here with Andrew Ivins because we've been talking about it so much. But we're going to head over to Peyton Patagna for more Dog Talk. Hey, guys. Yeah, we're wearing clothes, too. <laughs> I mean, do we not want to go through it? I could walk you through my wardrobe in about two seconds. Um, Always love listening to Rusty talk for obvious reasons, but especially when it comes to Georgia football and Georgia recruiting. I wanted to kind of shift back, though, to what you and I were talking about earlier, and then it ended up being a Georgia conversation, so we can dovetail off of that. It's not just where you're ranked on signing day. It's not how many four or five stars you have. I'm not making light of that. I believe stars very much matter. I believe talent very much wins the day at the end of the day. But it's balance. It's filling your needs. It is complementing your style and your approach. And philosophically, if you look at Georgia football and then you pull up their recruiting class, the two are kind of one. One blends seamlessly into the other. They know who they are yeah. and they recruit to their identity. That's why I love what Georgia does. And especially on the defensive front, we spent a lot of time on the defensive front. What we haven't talked about, Josh, has been the offensive end. What they've done on the offensive line, you look at the six foot tackle, 300 pounds, Monroe Freeling, a guy that we really like off the East Coast. And then Bo Hewley, we've talked a little bit about today out of the state of Georgia. Langston Hughes was a guy that kind of got thrown around with Auburn, Colorado late. Looks like he's going to stick with the Bulldogs. I love their tackle combination. Josh, they, they just kind of wear you down. That's what they did to LSU in the SEC championship. And then with the tight ends, I mean, we've seen it, uh, you know, over the last couple years with the tight end combination that they have uh, right now. And, and you look at Lawson, Lucky, Pierce Sperlin, Deuce Robinson's another name, a five-star top 32 guy for us that's still floating out there. I think Todd Hartley's the best tight end coach in the country. I love so much of the process of, what we've talked about, when you get to a certain point, and Georgia's had so much success, the roster building almost validates itself. So now they know who they are, they go out there and they recruit to it, and they're doing a heck of a job. The tight ends you mentioned, Sperlin and Lucky there, those are guys, when I tell you 6'3", 225, 6'6", 220, it, it's really, you can really pick your position. Jesse, you're gonna have to say that again because I have my volume turned down in my IFB, but um, those body types, I could probably pick three or four positions for you. Yeah, we talk about it being a height, weight, speed game. It almost gets to the point where it's really redundant, right? We talk about that. But Alabama, Georgia, is sitting on top of the rankings right now, number one and number two. This is what they do consistently year in and year out. And we talk about stacking top five talent and all these type of uh, players that are coming in year in and year out for a team like Alabama in Georgia. But their ability to do this year in and year out at multiple positions. Guys like Jamal Jarrett are really hard to find. Guys like Jordan Hall are really hard to find. Then to go out there, we talked about the linebackers. We haven't even talked about A.J. Harris, Joe Noel Aguero as well. Yeah. I mean, they are absolutely loaded at every level of their defense. And then offensively, 
it's really not this sexy operation, but they know who they are, they play to it, and like I said, they lean on people, and we see the separation. You know what's sexy is red and black confetti. Because that's what it always ends in, red and black confetti. I was going through my book bag the other day, I've still got it in there. And there is still red and black confetti from the national championship game in Indianapolis that I didn't even know was in there. I've made it through TSA with that <laughs> confetti all year.